I'm going to give you a quick tutorial to show you how to use Teams to facilitate online tutoring. So to get to Teams, the first thing you want to do is go to the Northampton Community College webpage and click on NCC Go Desktop over here. Then go to Faculty and Staff Login to My Logins and look for Microsoft Office 365 and click on that. And I'm already logged in, but if you aren't logged in, just go ahead and log in and then go to Teams. When you get to the team screen, then look for the team titled LC Online Tutoring and click on that. On the left-hand side, you'll see a list of all the current rooms and the name of the tutor who's assigned to that room. So if you're not already assigned to a room, one will be assigned to you for online tutoring if you're doing online tutoring with teams and you wanna use the room that has your name on it. So I will go to mine. Then you will see a couple of things on the screen. So at the top of this, this is the guest link. That link will be linked to WC Online, and that is a link that students will use when they click on the link in WC Online to access their online appointment. Below that, or maybe above it in your case, will be this box here that has the online tutoring room meeting in it. You may see a couple things under it that you don't need to worry about, just so that you know what they are if you see them. If you see where it says the room has ended, ignore that. The room is actually still current until the date that the room expires. So when we set these up, we set these up to be open all day, up through a date, probably sometime a year or so ahead of now. So the room is still accessible, but if the room was used before, when you come back to that room, you'll see that end time for the last time the room was used for a session. But rest assured, the room is still available to you. If it isn't for some reason, let your coordinator let me know and we'll take care of that for you. You also may see attendance reports under that. You don't need to worry about those. What you want to do now is go to the three dots on the right hand side of your tutoring room and click on that and then click on view meeting details. That will take you to your meeting screen. From there, you want to click on join. You don't want to change anything else. One thing I especially want to draw your attention to is don't click cancel meeting. Even if your student cancels or you're canceling for a certain day, as I mentioned earlier, the meetings run continuously. So if you hit cancel meeting, that ends the meeting permanently, and then we have to create a new session for you in Teams and then relink that to WC Online. So just leave the meeting running. Don't worry about cancel meeting. If you cancel an appointment, do that in WC Online, not in Teams. Then you want to click Join, and that will take you to this screen here. It'll tell you um, that your camera, usually your camera will be turned on. In this case, it's off because I'm using the screen sharing uh, function, which uses a video card for the purposes of creating this training, but the camera would be on, the mic would be on, you have levels here. If everything looks good, click join now. And that will take you to your room. So that is how you access your room in Teams to do online tutoring. Within this room, you'll see several tools. One thing I wanna point out to you is there's a menu on the left and there's a menu on the top. These are separate menus. One thing that has led to a few questions is why we have two different chat icons that look the same. The one on the left will chat with the team itself. That's the general chat. The chat button at the top will enable you to send a chat within the session. However, as of right now, we haven't figured out a way to set this up where students can also use this chat. So this is a work in progress. So for now, we're not gonna use either of those chat buttons, but just know what they are and why they're there. I'm gonna turn that off. The people button here shows participants. Right now, I'm the only person in this meeting. It also will suggest other people. You can also um, minimize the suggestions if you just wanna see who's in the current meeting. You can change your view. So the gallery view is just, um, the typical default setting. There's also a together mode view, which is pretty cool. So it'll actually put everybody who's in the meeting into what looks like stadium seating. It's kind of a cool feature. But I would say for the most part, you're probably gonna to wanna to use the regular gallery view. But just know that's there. Under more actions, you have record and transcribe. You also have meeting information, meeting notes, background effects. You can choose different backgrounds language and speech and settings. And then under settings and device settings. So if you do look at your audio or video settings, that's where to find them. And you can also 
change some other features and there are some accessibility options as well. Over here you have your camera and microphone switches. You can turn those on and off. To share your screen or to share a whiteboard, you will click on the share button over here on the right. So click on screen window or tab, which brings up this menu. I would suggest sharing your entire screen. And then if you have more than one screen, you can choose the screen you want to share. And then you click share, that will share your screen. When you have finished sharing, you would just click uh, stop sharing. That will turn off the screen sharing feature. One thing to note about using Teams is only one person can share at a time. So if you're sharing, you'll have to stop sharing before your student will be able to share their screen. The whiteboard features are pretty cool in Teams as well. So I'm going to show you those. To access the whiteboard feature, click on the share button, then click on Microsoft Whiteboard. And this will load your whiteboard. You may in some cases have an option of choosing among several whiteboards. If you don't see that, immediately click the home button and this will show all the whiteboards that you have access to, including whiteboards that you've created and whiteboards that others have shared with you. And as you can see, we've had some fun playing around with this. So here's a demonstration of how to use some of the tools in the whiteboard. We'll start with notes. If you want to post a note, you can choose your color of your post-it note and just drop it there. and your note. That's just a cool little thing you can put somewhere on your way. So I'll make that smaller. You also create text boxes like this. There it is. You can draw shapes. There are certain shapes that are already included in your program, such as triangles, arrows. Also add text to that if you want to. This can be helpful if you're working on graphing an equation or describing what the equation might look like on a graph. You can draw your axes, and then I'll show you how to use the, uh, the pencil tool if you want to draw something that's not one of these prefabricated shapes. I'll split the other lines between things, whatever. So for that, you want to click on the inking tool, and you can choose your color as well if you click on this in the thickness and type of line. So let's just draw, use this color here, and let's say that we're graphing y equals x squared. So that would look something kind of like this. So you can draw that on here as well. And again, if you want to change the type of uh, implement you're using, you can. The rainbow one's kind of fun. And again, you can change the size of it. So if you want something that's narrow or wider, you have those options as well. There's also an eraser, so you can erase things with the eraser, or you can use the lasso select tool to select an area, and then that you can either move it, or if you hit the delete key, that will erase it. Reactions are fun, so maybe you can put a check mark there, and these are all resizable as well. Put a smiley face somewhere on your whiteboard, Maybe if you have a question about something, you can put that there. Again, these are all kind of fun. You can play around with these. And I think in tutoring, you know, they can make the session a little bit more lively. You can also include images. There are some templates for some things, documents. Links is a good tool too. So let's say, for example, you want to share a link with a student. One way to do that, especially since chat isn't um, entirely functional right now, would be to insert the link into the whiteboard. So let's put the link to the Learning Center in here. So you type the URL for the link, then click Insert, and there it is. If you click on the link, it takes you to our webpage. And you can move this around. But again, there are a lot of tools in the whiteboard I would I'd actually recommend playing around with this a little bit on your own before your first session using Teams, just to familiarize yourself with these features. You can access your room at any time, so you don't have to have an appointment to go into there. You just go into the room the way I showed you earlier and go to your whiteboard and have some fun. And then if you want to delete everything in your whiteboard, you can just select all of it. And that lasso tool is really handy for that. 
and then hit delete. Oh, you can also, I'll show you this, you can select individual objects and delete or move them as well. When you're done with the whiteboard, you would just hit stop sharing. So if you have any questions about how to use Teams for tutoring, don't hesitate to reach out to your coordinator or to me. We'd be happy to help you. Also, we are going to provide you with a printed guide or an electronic guide that will give you some more instructions on how to use Teams for tutoring.